couple of weeks ago, my wife and I had a, a very nice holiday on the island of Madeira. While we were there, it occurred to me that it might be a nice idea to make a little video about how you can uh, upgrade your holiday snaps to something a wee bit more interesting. So uh, this is what I came up with, shot fairly minimally, um, but I hope you find it helpful. And uh, I mean, I was on holiday after all. What do you expect here, Hollywood? <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Well, welcome to my uh, holiday balcony here in uh, Madeira. Yep, I'm on holiday and everyone's entitled to a holiday. But I thought, since I was here, it might be nice to take the opportunity just to do a short little video on how we can maybe take our photographs above the level of just being a tourist to being something that's a little bit more interesting and a little bit more engaging, maybe a bit more creative. So, uh, first a word about the kit, what have I brought with me? I have travelled fairly lightly. Um, I've got my Canon uh, 7D and uh, that's kitted out with an 18 to 55mm kit lens and there's nothing the matter with kit lenses. Uh, trust me. And I've also got it attached to a sling. Uh, personally, I prefer to use a sling with my camera because I, I don't like it hanging in front of me in a strap. Bobbing about on a sling, you wear it crosswise, uh, has a quick release, easy to bring up, ready to shoot at any time. That is really it. Photographically, I've got a lens cloth. Um, for keeping things clean and tidy. I've got my Gorilla Pod, uh, should I want to do um, maybe a long exposure, um, can always wrap that to a fence. It's not as steady as a regular tripod, um, but it can get you there. And the only other piece of uh, photographic kit really is my iPhone. And uh, well, apart from that, uh, for the camera, uh, backup batteries and charger in this nice little bag which fits into the rucksack neat and tidy and that's it <laughs> that's the kit um, so what I'm hoping to do this holiday is to uh, for me I'll do the usual thing that I do on holiday I'll, I'll take my usual photographs I'll take the usual kind of holiday snaps but the, the thing that takes you from holiday snap to a level up is not so much what you see but how you see it so I'll be looking for different angles on things. Um, I'll be looking for what catches my eye, maybe patterns in things, um, maybe the way that lines come in, maybe using moving lines um, in a different way. And uh, yeah, taking that kind of approach, I think there are, for me, maybe two ways I would go about um, doing holiday photographs at a different kind of level. Can you hear that? <laughs> Blooming cruise ship siren in the background. There are cruise ships coming in and out of here on a regular basis. Um, so, yeah, I, I tend to look at it from the point of view of maybe travel documentary type photography. You're trying to tell the story of a place through what you see, what you encounter. Um, or there's the kind of um, leaning towards fine art kind of approach of just what actually takes my attention here in a creative sort of way. Uh, that's probably, oh my goodness, that was screechy. Was, <laughs> but I'm probably leaning the, the latter direction of, of being a bit more kind of um, fine art leaning. That's kind of the mood I feel at the moment, I suppose. But um, yeah, that's the intention. I, I'm not really going to do much in the way of, if any, you know, pieces to the camera other than this one. Um, I think what I'll probably do is just do minimal video recording, um, but we'll we'll capture on video scenes and things where where we might be, and uh, I'll add a soundtrack later. Uh, 
to, to describe it. It is particularly noisy sitting up here. I hope this audio is coming over okay. <laughs> if it's not, I'll be having to re-record this back at home um, or finding somewhere quiet. But um, Madeira, first impressions, lovely place. Lovely place. So looking forward to getting lots of photographs done here. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. While we were there, we found ourselves at the end of the carnival season and we uh, witnessed the final parade of that season, which they call the Goofy Parade. Uh, it's one that's very silly, lots of comedy, lots of political satire. And of course, because of the nature of that, it's a, a great opportunity for photographs. But how do you get something uh, that's a little bit different from the norm? Well, let's take this one as an example. What I've tried to do here is to make sure that the subject is filling the frame as much as possible. Um, I didn't want to lose the context, so therefore, um, although the original shot was taken a bit wider than this, and I think that's a thing I would suggest it's worth doing, is shoot originally a little bit wider because it gives you the chance um, later on um, to crop it in. And that's what I've done here, is I cropped this one in, but I didn't want to crop it so tightly that we lose the sense of the crowd. Uh, we want to see that as part of the context, but we also want the subject to be dominant. And this one also was quite interesting because of the, the masks that they were wearing um, and the colours, the, the red particularly uh, stands out really well. I also like the composition in this one. Uh, with the characters moving slightly towards the camera on a just on a little bit of an angle uh, and the way that the lead character's head is turned uh, towards the crowd uh, kind of mirrored by the character immediately over his right hand shoulder um, I, I think all of those elements really just attracted me um, and there's a there's a kind of a dynamism to, to this shot as well which I think makes it lively and interesting and and for a still shot, reasonably captures the, the dynamic of the, the, the carnival parade. Now, just a quick technical thing on capturing this kind of image. Because you're in a, a setting where things are happening quickly in front of you, but conditions are fairly consistent, uh, what I tend to do is pop the camera into manual mode. I tend to shoot in manual anyway um, and here I chose a, a shutter speed of one four hundredth of a second which I reckoned would be enough to stop most of the motion um, get me good sharp images um, I certainly avoid camera shake being handheld uh, at that and also an, an aperture of f9 which would give me I hoped enough scope uh, to play with um, and then put the ISO into automatic so the camera chooses the ISO to get the correct balanced exposure. Another thing to consider if you want to move your holiday snaps up a level is to look at the angle of view. I saw so many people take this exact photograph uh, of these sculptures uh, set at the side of the path where people just saw them um, and took this head-on shot without bothering to look around to see if there was anything a little more interesting uh, such as this. All I did on this occasion was move to the side uh, and see what kind of shot was available looking along the line of these uh, sculptures and I think hopefully you'll agree that this is a more interesting shot that fills the frame with the subject um, and leads to a more interesting composition. And we still know what these things are. So continuing this theme of positioning, but I'm going to develop this a little bit further. Um, I saw again a number of people take shots very similar to what you see going on here. Uh, these flamingos um, in their little pool and people were taking almost exactly the same vantage point, uh, framing up their shots, standing upright, and I mean, I'm, I'm not going to suggest that they didn't get shots that they were happy with. 
or that were good. Um, but I didn't see anyone actually scope around and see if there were different possibilities here, um, to see if there were different ways that we could represent this. Um, so I decided to do something a wee bit different. And what I did was to crouch down and take a shot uh, between the railings of the fence but not directly of the flamingos themselves but rather their reflection uh, in the water thinking that once I get this back home I'm sure there's something I can do with this and it turned out there was <laughs> um, all I did in this uh, and and you know I use Lightroom for most of my photo editing a little bit of Photoshop now and then but all of this was done in Lightroom and you may well have other uh, software that you use and it may well allow you to do similar things. But I simply flipped the image vertically uh, so that now it looked like the birds were standing up. But because this is a reflection and because you have the shimmering, it now makes it look a little bit more kind of painterly, a little bit more abstract and I think just a little bit more interesting. Um, I also did a little bit of tweaking on um, exposure and uh, on colour settings, but not a great deal. It was a very light touch. I always get excited when I hear the sound of running water because I think there may well be opportunities here. And seeing this setup, I thought mm, I could use that waterfall as a backdrop. And here's the resulting photograph. Uh, and slightly different take on your average holiday portrait shot. Um, what I did here was used a, a shutter speed that was uh, slow enough to soften the, the water, but fast enough to uh, cope with any camera shake because I was operating handheld. And I also popped up the onboard flash of the camera just to provide some fill in because we were in shadow. And I think that works pretty well. And now for something completely different. I think I mentioned in the introduction that one of the things I'd look out for were shapes and patterns. And that's where we're going next. And uh, starting with an example that caught my eye from the very balcony on which I filmed that introduction. What I was most struck with here was pattern and contrast. Looking down onto the, the pool area, there were all these uh, empty sun loungers. Uh, the direction that the, the sun was coming from was casting these very sharp shadows uh, at a really nice angle. Um, and that really just caught my eye. But then the more I looked, I thought there is a contrast here between the very sharp angular lines of the man-made objects, the sun loungers, and what nature's made, the trees, uh, where you can see the, the, the shadow lines very differently there. And it just struck me that, that there was a, a really strong contrast uh, in those two things. And because I was thinking contrast, really when I had this uh, back on the computer and was looking at it for editing, I decided to uh, switch it back to a black and white shot, boost up the contrast, um, and really just make something a little more stark with it. This next one is uh, more of an example of using shape and pattern as a leading line up towards uh, the main subject. Um, it's just, again, it's one of those things that I was struck with in the moment of the, the pattern on the pavement and uh, how those just naturally led the eye up to the, to the building. Um, and to make the most of this, I, I really tried to get myself a nice low vantage point, so I was crouching down quite a bit for this one. But again, um, j just changing your position slightly, seeing what's there, and using that to your advantage is one of those things that just elevates your photos from um, the average to a shot to something a wee bit different. And continuing the, the theme of uh, shape and pattern, uh, the, the, this is just a configuration that caught my eye. When, when you're in somewhere, it's often helpful just to remember to look up, look around, look in different directions, because there will be things 
that catch your eye. And, and here, just the way that the geometry of these lines uh, were working uh, grabbed my attention. And I, I moved myself around until I could get the lines uh, falling just exactly uh, as I felt was best for the composition. This was actually taken on my iPhone. Uh, it was in um, a photographic museum and I'd had to check the backpack and all the all the, the other stuff uh, into a locker at the, at the time. So this was just quickly taken uh, with the iPhone and quite a happy result. And finally, don't be afraid to tell a story with a detailed shot. I'm sure you can tell from this one that we were on a boat trip. Um, and uh, this caught my attention when we were on that trip. Uh, I liked the composition of it. And even in that moment, I was thinking about black and white as a possible uh, way of exhibiting this one. Um, and I think actually it works, it works nicely in black and white. Just a little technical thing uh, on these, where there's a horizon in the shot, do try to keep it level. Um, if you can't do that in camera, then check it when you're back home and you're editing software because there I'm sure you can fix it with almost any software. Um, there's nothing worse than a slightly tilting horizon. Makes you wonder where all that water's going to go. Well, there we go. I hope you found that helpful. I hope you found it useful. And I hope it inspires you to do something similar with your own holiday photos. Try and take them up a level. I think the, the one takeaway from this video, um, if I could distill it down to one thing for you, is that, remember, it's not so much what you see, but how you see it. Uh, try to train yourself to learn to see the familiar differently. And that's probably the big thing to take away from here. So um, I thank you once again for dropping by. If you've enjoyed this, please remember to give it a like, thumbs up, uh, and um, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you do subscribe, then please turn on notifications and you'll be advised every time I upload new content. So once again, thank you for dropping by and uh, I will see you in the next one.